Pleasure to meet you, my brother. You as well. Real blessing. You as well, thank you. Um, Chevalier, I, I loved and hated it all at the same time. Loved it because I uh, love to see black excellence rising against adversity. Mm -hmm. Hated it because it evoked that whole feeling of being disconnected from roots. Yeah. How did it resonate with you? Um, I think I was just really inspired by the whole um, arc of this gentleman's life, you know? I, I think it was fascinating to me to know that he, knowing the end of the story and knowing what he was able to accomplish and also knowing that he was, it's the 1700s, um, we're dealing with the Black Code, we're dealing with, you know, so many different restrictions on Black people. And yet here he is, friends with the Queen, and it, I was just trying to do the math. And then knowing he was the son of a slave and a slave owner, that's also a fascinating, like, um, psychological obstacle for him to overcome as mm -hmm. well. So I was just, I was really fascinated by him, inspired by him, um, and eager to dissect it all. Did you dig down deep into the backstory in order to get grips with, you know, a bit more of the narrative that surrounded Trump? 100%. I, I read as much as I could on mostly, to be honest, the father and the mother's relationship. Right. I I wanted to know how she navigated that. I also wanted to know from his, not necessarily from his perspective, but what historically were the accounts that he took to either protect Joseph, because technically Joseph was being, his apartment was being paid for by his father. And I wanted to know how weird that relationship might have been. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, there's just so many things about parents that say so much about how a child comes up um, and what they're, you know, what they're dealing with per emotionally, but also psychologically, and, and what they are able to um, achieve because of the, the obstacle. Yeah, agreed. My son's here, actually, and he, um, he wanted me to ask you about the violin specifically. Did you know how to play it before? Um, and if you didn't, what was the process like for you? Because it's a very unnatural posture, isn't it? Yeah, it is really unnatural. That's very true. <laughs> Does he play? No, he plays piano. OK, cool. Yeah, yeah I play piano, too. Right. Um, but yeah, my first instrument was the violin. So I think from an early age, I still had a, a, a you know understanding right. of what it felt like. I think getting back into it 20 years later is a very different experience, though. Um, the muscle memory is not there as like as I expected <laughs> it to be. But um, it just it was a lot of work, you know. I talked to my dad. He's a classical music teacher. Right. And there's an advantage, huh? There's an advantage. Big advantage, exactly. So we we understood how to come up with a plan and what it took in order to get to where we needed to get for it. So five months, seven days a week, six hours a day, that was the, that was the, that was the, you know, the meal plan. I'm glad you said that because he's listening. So he knows what commitment looks like. Now. <laughs> um, like you said, you're the illegitimate son um, of an African slave. The movie's loaded with messaging, right? Yes. I, I wondered, how did you find, um, or share, share your thoughts on some of those narratives in terms of how they, seem to be a recurring theme even in 2023, right? We're dealing with the same immigration, some of the same issues that kind of pertained to the time of the movie. I think it's an issue of respect, you know? I think we, we really don't know how to, we don't respect the, the, the depth and the weight of the, the human being. And when we do that, we start to subject them to being something transactional, a commodity, um, something just to further our economics. And that's, you know, that's what we're looking at in the, the movies, particularly. We're watching a lot of people come in and we're like, well, how does the queen at 14 years old help our economics over here in Austria? You know, or how does this young black man, if he's presenting, uh, putting in a show and bringing bodies to a seat, even Joseph presenting himself, it's like, I can, you know, I can put bodies in the seats. I can, I can get you money. I'm basically saying it's all about money. Everything's about money. Um... We've reduced every, ourselves and everyone around us as a dollar sign. Mm. And suddenly we wonder why we feel dehumanized and why people feel there's no equity, why people feel they're angry, why people are revolting against each other, why the brainwashed ideals are being upheld in order to, why people keep lying. You know what I mean? It's like everyone's trying to protect what they think they own, but they have no ownership over their actual identity. Um, and that, yeah, that's really in a nutshell. <laughs> interesting, interesting. The, um, the ending you touched on briefly, don't want to give it away, obviously, yeah. but I can see it being a, a point of discussion amongst specifically the black British audience over here. Um, so what do you think will be the major talking points that people take away from this? Just in your own opinion, there are many, I get it, but what do you think that will be? 
Um, I think the positive part of the story is his his ability to find himself despite all the noise, and his his understanding that if I'm not trying to contribute to the community, then I'm actually sliding myself. And hopefully, no matter where you come from or whatever you are, what communities you're a part of, what am I contributing versus what am I taking away? Mm -hmm. And that is what's so clear to me about once we get to the, the latter half of Joseph's story. He comes back to his roots mm -hmm. and he comes back to where he is better, where he's most purposeful. It's interesting um, that I came in and spoke about your hair, given how significant hair is in this movie. Mm -hmm. And it might go over some people's head if you're not. It's from true. the community, right? It's but true. that's a big thing, isn't it? Very significant of, I thought, the director to kind of make a, a yeah. mention on that. Yeah, yeah, it's really cool. That's one of the first things Stephen, our director, told me. He was like, I want you to have braids at the end of the film. And I was like, wow, that's that's a powerful, it's a powerful image. And yeah, I was excited to, to do it, because it was even freeing for me to wear my hair like that, because, you know, I started doing it in press tours, but I remember it as a time where you know, you weren't supposed to like be like that in a press tour. You were supposed to present yourself with a clean haircut and wear nice suits and you're, you know, you, you're a leading man and all these things. And there's such restrictions on your individuality and your where you come from. Um, but yeah, it's really beautiful. Positive change. Um, thanks for your time. Really appreciate it. Thank you, I appreciate you. <laughs>